Sorry if I sound a bit off and teeny bit under the weather, but today we've got a great chapter, and yay, no classes this morning so I can, you know, do this early. First of all, everyone called it. Brooke had the Poneglyph rubbings in his skull. But before I get really deep into that, we got to see probably a very, very funny sequence, which actually helped to, you know, tone down the seriousness of the event. Stealing Brooke back from a sleeping Big Mom. Something that really... I like how, how Oda did it. First, he made it seem like he was challenges with each of the regrouped Sanji Retrieval team, including Jimbei, taking their turns with Chopper sneezing his way not out of victory. Uh, pff, Carrot uh, almost waking Zeus. And then Nami. Actually, almost get Pedro. Pedro also tried and couldn't do anything while she was tossing and turning. And then Nami, the success, unfortunately, their uh, decoy Brook scared actual Brook into nearly waking everyone up, and Jimbei saved them from a heavenly fire attack. So, bravo, Oda. That was brilliant. And it's good to see that, uh, you know, Brook finally has everything he really needed, he wanted to get. So, yeah. His speech to Big Mom proved right, because now, at the very least, they have one of the two things they came for. So even if Sanji wasn't going to come back with them, you know, he'd still see that it wasn't all for nothing. And they proved right in that sense. But, there was uh, two other things in this chapter. One, Bobbin. I think next chapter we'll see a fight between Bobbin and Sanji, considering that last week Bobbin got kicked through a wall, but pretty much shook that off, and now we finally get to see his Devil Fruit ability. I mean, come on, there's no way he didn't have one. Literally, Big Mom's crew is so full of so many different kinds of Devil Fruit abilities, that plus their actual strength level put together makes fighting an entire army of them like Luffy attempted to that much more dangerous because you never know how so many different types of devil fruits are going to work at the same time anyone who comes in even slightly unprepared is basically screwed and you know having Sanji you no know, having Luffy I'm sorry like I said I'm a little sick oh my god my nose having Luffy go in as unprepared as he did you know sick and tired from having his uh Year four used. It was difficult for him. So, one second. Going back to Bobbin himself, though, his devil fruit ability is uh, unknown mostly, but it seems that he can put others to sleep at the very least. <sighs> okay, sorry. It might also have something to do with how he moved from side to side like a metronome. Sorry about the yawning, though, like I said sick, plus I just woke up, but no, uh, maybe metronome, metronome fruit, I don't know, what do you guys think Bobbin's devil fruit ability might be, and one other thing, what, what do you guys think is gonna, are, will they still go on with the wedding, because at this point it seems like there's very little reason to go on with the wedding, other than you know, saving Zeph. Woo! Goddamn. But like I was saying, Luffy and Sanji have finally met, although Sanji looks like a goddamn mummy now. Luffy looks like a goddamn mummy now. Woo, my brain's fucked up. Look, that is literally another plot line this close to getting, you know, put together. Bobbin will probably come in and stop Sanji from feeding Luffy at this point. But how big a role will Bob and play? Like, will he really just stop or will he recapture Sanji or something? I don't know. Like, how are they going to get to the wedding from here? Because there's no way they can't have the wedding. Because the wedding itself is a huge, 
huge part of the arc that's been, you know, built up from basically the beginning. I mean, literally. All they want to do is sneak in and out, so it makes sense for them not to want to have that big confrontation at the end. But at the same time, I can't see a way that this arc would have, <gasps> have closure without doing that. So, how are they going to tie that in, you know? Doesn't seem possible at this point, you know? But either way, it is what it is. Like, are we going to get to see some some final fight, some final all for all. I mean, in the end, they still have to, you know, get off the island. Maybe it's not that easy. Maybe they have to cause a big ruckus in order for them to slip off the island. I don't know. Like, how will that play in? And how will the rest of the Strahads, you know, on the way to Wano make it in? When are we going to see anything more of them or the Reverie? Are we going to just wait until the arc is complete to see anything? I mean, we could. But, in the end, there are a few things. Now, for time's sake, I, I was going to either make a separate video about something about the arc, but I think for review and discussion like I usually do, I'm just going to put this down... Because since we're nearing the completion of the arc, one one way or form of another, there are the other plot points that have been mostly forgotten by us readers that we might want to discuss about, such as Capone. He, he's probably the least forgotten. Some people probably have not forgotten as much about him. Plus, Nitro looks like a homie based off of him, so maybe his soul's in there or something. I remember one reviewer, maybe Sawyer, talked about that but in the end what is Capone's real motives like will he come back if we do go to the wedding is that when he makes his move and is Peckham's alive like will was that the last we'll see of Peckham's and for one of the other ones which was Caesar's situation many of us have probably forgotten about Caesar clown I haven't for one so Caesar is still being forced to make the soldier formula. I'm pretty sure the Straw Hats themselves have forgotten about Caesar. What is it going to take for one of them to remember that they have to save him too? I mean, they don't have to. That's one thing. And they probably don't want to. But at the same time, us as the audience would rather not have that left out. Unless... Like many have speculated, Big Mom will not be defeated, and maybe leaving Caesar in her care might be one of the big plot points that would have to be dealt with the second time around. But I don't really like that. I want Caesar to be safe now. I don't know why, but I do. I've, I, I'll be honest. I actually kind of liked the the formula that's not the formula the situation that Caesar's capture brought to the Straw Hats, how he interacted with each of them, and how his humor was just off the wall in comparison to what he dealt with alongside the uh, Straw Hats. Now, of course, it might change a bit with Law not in the picture, but in the end. Caesar has still become a decent part of the equation, just as much as Law has more or less become part of the Straw Hat equation. Just how Pedro and, and Carrot have become a decent part of the equation. So, that gets me thinking. Now that Jimbe is more or less definitely not leaving their side again... Will the others that many have thought of as potential strats, and yes, I'm including Caesar in this list, will they not be able to stay with them? Maybe Pedro would join. I know a lot of people want character to join. I think it's about time we got another female on the crew. But the thing is, can all four of them join in such a short time? Plus, Caesar's definitely not forgiven for his previous stints. But at the same time, 
It wouldn't be the first time that a former villain of theirs joined. Frankie's not even the best of the the uh, solutions. He was just a not even a villain. He was just a uh, a brute, a thug that was just an obstacle at the time. And Robin was the villain that joined the crew. So could Caesar potentially be a villain that joins the crew? I honestly would like to see more of Caesar, but at the same time. I'm conflicted on whether I would think he'd be a decent fit for the Straw Hats or not. First of all, they don't need a second doctor. But hell, at this point, I don't even know what kind of, you know, specifics you need for a pirate crew anymore. They've got their doctor, they've got their cook, they've got their navigator. Honestly, aside from that, with Jimbe as basically their hell's helmsman now, I don't really see what else they need. Um, and their musician. I can't forget their musician. Basically, there are no more predetermined slots to be filled. Shipwright, too. Almost forgot Frankie. Again, literally, they would only be joining the Straw Hats for Straw Hats' sake. And I'm okay with that. Because in the end, we don't really pay that much attention to what each individual member does when the ship is moving as much as we'd like but there are some times that we do. And I still like that. I like how Robin's historian role has become more center place. But in the end, you know, what do you guys think? Do you want all four of them to be straw hats? Or are you repulsed at the idea of Caesar joining? Either way, leave a comment below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Smalls Black 94 I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Love you guys.